what is going on guys welcome to today's video in today's video we are going to be walking through azure machine learning studio classic where you will learn how to create an experiment and train a machine learning model using the simple and easy to use user interface where you just drag and drop module after module and connect them together and by the end you have a fully trained machine learning model with little to no code needed. It's quite an amazing feat and this video will help you go from start to finish. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get right into the video. So first things first, if you're new to Azure Machine Learning Studio Classic, this is what it looks like when you're within a workspace is what they call it. Um, so they're gonna see all these different tabs and I'll go through them on the left. But if you're if you're very, very new and you have never done it before, you're just gonna go to Google and just Google studio.azureml.net and you're gonna go click enter and it's gonna bring you to the sign-in page. You're gonna go ahead and click sign in. And like I said, if you do not have a Microsoft account, just go ahead and create one. It only takes a couple of minutes um, and that will give you access to the free workspace version. There's two versions. The free version gives you the access of creating um, experiments and training machine learning models of all different sorts. Um, and then the paid version, which I believe is $10, allows you to actually um, create web services that will consume your trained models so that you can actually run them within um, like web applications or mobile applications. But for the purpose of this video, you can just use the free version. So you're just gonna create an account and then it will automatically bring you to a page like this. Um, it'll create the free workspace for you. And then in this video, we are going to be stepping through a tutorial on how to create a um, prediction model that predicts the price of a car based on numerous features about the vehicle. So it's pretty cool. Um, so I'm just gonna step through uh, Azure Machine Learning Studio Classic. So first you have projects. So projects is where you can throw experiments and data sets um, all into one kind of bin so that if you had a bunch of different experiments, creating a bunch of different models, all about one project, you would just go ahead and create it. So I've already created the experiment, so I could just go click it and then add it to the uh, project. And now you'll see that it has the data set and the experiment within the project. So that's pretty cool. Experiments are where you actually go and create the models um, using the U UI interface. Um, you've got data sets, so you can actually go ahead and upload data sets like a CSV from your local file and then read it in. Um, and then train models and web services are when you actually want to use your train model within a application of sorts. Um, so you're creating a web service that can be, that then can consume your model and the train model will go here and the web service will go into web services. So getting started, we're going to go ahead and create, um, this automobile price prediction experiment. I'm just going to go to my standard, um, paid workspace because I don't have it already created there. So I can do it from scratch for you all. So you're just going to go and click new. This is going to go ahead and pop open. Um, different choices of experiments. If you want other tutorials after this video, I recommend there's a bunch of cool ones showing you really the diverse functionality that you can do with uh, Azure Machine Learning Studio uh, and all different sorts of classification, regressions, image object detections. Uh, but for the sake of this experiment, just go ahead and create a blank experiment. Um, we're going to go ahead and call it automobile price prediction. And you can add a little summary if you want, like predicting the price of a car based on numerous features. So there you go. And to start, you can see that all the different functionality um, on the left here that you can add to your model. Um, and these are all called modules. So you're going to add a bunch of modules, um, just drag and drop them in connect them and then hit run. And that's going to actually run your model and create the model for you. So you can actually create models um, and train them with absolutely zero code, which is awesome. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're just going to go to save data sets and we're going to use a sample data set that 
Microsoft already has for us. It's the automobile price data. So you're just gonna drag that in. Doesn't matter actually where you drag it. Um, so now that we already have our data set in here, and if we go to visualize, we can actually see all the data and all the different features and columns. So we have a bunch of different types like the make of the car, length, engine location, and all the way to price, which is what we are going to create our model to actually predict. So you can see that we already have the data loaded in. But like I said, you could cr create your own data and then uh, it would be in here, uh, local data, um, if you had created a data set. And then you would just add it in and it would do the exact same thing. It would read in your CSV or whatever type of file you want. Um, and then next we are going to actually look up columns and then this is go you're going to go ahead and collect the select columns and data set and drag it in so this module allows you to include or exclude uh whatever columns you want from your data set just connect the output port of our data set module to the select columns uh module and then on the right this is where you actually launch and select what columns you want to configure so we're going to go with click with rules all columns and go to exclude column names and normalize losses. And the reason we're doing this is because if you go back and click on the data set and visualize it, uh, the normalized losses column has a high percentage of blank um, rows. Um, and that's not what we want. You don't want to have columns that have a lot of empty fields. So we're just going to go ahead and remove it entirely. So that's good practice to do. Uh, if there's something that doesn't have a lot of, uh, it does, does have a lot of missing fields, just go ahead and remove it from your data set. Um, and now we're going to go to cleaning our data. So you can actually pre-process your data within here. We're going to drag in the module clean missing data and hook it up. So you can see how easy it is to drag and drop and connect all these modules together to create our model. So it's really simple. And so clean missing data, we are going to have it set as maximum missing values in a row one, and we are going to set it to uh, remove the entire row. So if a row in our data set has an empty field in it, we are just going to remove that row from our data set for simplicity's sake. But there's um, a bunch of other uh, functions you can do. Like you can replace it with the mean from uh, that column, the median, the mode, a uh, whole bunch of other things. You can even do custom and specify exactly what you want to have done with uh, missing values in rows. But for our purpose, keeping it simple, we are just removing that row altogether. So now we're going to add another select columns in data set and oh, didn't drag it in. So you're gonna drag another one in, go for the clean missing data into here. And this one is just for the data that gets removed. Um, and we don't want anything to do with that. So we're not gonna hook that up, but we're selecting columns in data set again, because this time we are going to include uh, columns that we want, that we think are going to be the actual heavy hitters or heavy features that will actually influence the price of the automobile. So this you can kind of play around with, but we're going to do make body style. And I just, I, I just got this from playing around. So this might not be the best features to move forward with in my model, but for the purpose of this video, it will work well enough. Um, and I got decent results, so as you'll see. So we're just gonna keep adding in these features, these columns that we want to use for price prediction and the rest we are suit, or have decided that they aren't um, as impactful on our model. But um, like I said, I urge you to just play around, like adding them all, removing a few, uh, and see which which uh, selections get you the closest. So now that we've chosen all the columns we want to use in our predictive model, we can go ahead and split the data. So you're just going to go for the split the data module, connect the ports. And now if you click and look on the right, 
This is where you set the fraction that you want of the data set for training and the rest will go to testing. So I recommend doing either 70-30 or 80-20 split. Um, I'm going to do 0 0.7. So that means that 70% of my data set will be for training and the remaining 30 will be for uh, testing. So, yep, it's as simple as that. And now from here, we can actually start to choose our model and train it. So for this example, we are going to go and choose our algorithm or model type. Since we are trying to predict a price value, we are doing a regression um, type of problem since we are predicting a specific value instead of predicting a class, which would be classification. Uh, so we're going to drag in the linear regression model. Uh, and then we're going to line that up. And now we can drag in the module for training. So train model, and this is what's going to go ahead and actually train the model on the speci specified algorithm. So you're going to do the left port of the split data. That is the training part and connect that to the right of the train module and the model type to the left. And then you're going to click on train model and launch the column selector. So this is where you choose the actual column that you are trying to uh, predict. So we're trying to predict price. Therefore, we will choose price to train our model on. So once you've gone ahead with that, now it comes time to score your model. So you look up score in the modules and drag score module in. And for this, you do the output of train model into the left and you're gonna grab the right port of split data, which is our testing uh, data set, and drag that to the right port of score model. So you can, I hope you're seeing how pretty simple it is to drag and drop and configure your model with almost uh, minimal data science experience. Um, Cause we haven't done any coding so far. It's just been selecting stuff. So that's going to score our model. And now we want to evaluate our model so we can see how it did. So we're just going to do evaluate model, drag it in there. And we are going to just hook that up to our score module. And it's as simple as that. So now we've actually completed the model. Uh, we've gotten our data set. Let's zoom in a bit here for you guys. So we have gone all the way from our data set, removing a column that had a bunch of empty fields, cleaning our missing data, removing rows that had empty fields in them, uh, selecting the columns, uh, mix matching, what we think are going to be the optimal features and what features aren't going to be a big factor in our prediction, and just moving forward, including only the ones that we think are going to have that big impact. Uh, and then we split our data into our training set and our test set. We choose our algorithm, linear regression, since this is a regression problem. Um, then we train our model on our training set, and then we score our model using our test set. And finally, we evaluate. So once you've done all this and you've connected everything, you're just going to want to go ahead and hit run. So this is going to take a couple of minutes, but it's actually going to go step by step and actually start running um, each module one at a time in the workflow. Uh, you can see it's running. We'd, it's already selected the columns in the data set, and it's in a step by step. So it'll take a couple minutes, and we'll come back when it finishes. So our model has ran to completion, and we can see that we have these green check marks beside all of our modules. So that's good. It's ran, it's completed. And we can actually show you how to view the results. So you can go into your score module, click on the one and hit visualize. And this will actually pop open. You can see that these are all the features that we decided to keep and the scored label. So the scored label is what our trained model actually predicted. And to the left is the actual price. So if we go down, we can see that our model is fairly accurate. Um, a bunch of them are pretty close, but there's a couple like here that are 
decent amount off. So you can see that we obviously could train um, and improve our, our model by maybe adding in some different features, mix and matching, playing around until we get the optimized result. But for the most part, you can see how we have uh, completed and made a pretty accurate and uh, decent model for such a quick tutorial um, and just dragging and dropping and not needing any code. And we've created a workable uh, solution. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then as well, you can go to evaluate and you can also uh, visualize this. It will show you the error, um, the mean, abs mean absolute error, a different type, bunch of different types of errors. So you can see that how it went down uh, over time. Um, but yeah, I hope this has been a good demo for you guys in getting started with Azure Machine Learning Studio. You've successfully created a machine learning model to predict the price of cars and automobiles based on a numerous features. Uh, I urge you to play around because there is so many different types of models that are come built in with Azure Machine Learning Studio um, that you can play around with and learn. Um, there is endless combinations of things you can do. And you can actually, once you get better, you can actually add Python scripts or R scripts, apply stats, use some OpenCV libraries, uh, doing NLP, natural language processing. So really the opportunities are endless for uh, what you can do. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like the video. And let me know if you want to continue seeing videos like this where I go through how to create machine learning models with Azure Machine Learning uh, with little to no code. Um, yeah, let me know down in the comments whether you want to see more of these videos. It means a lot. Thanks.